today is uh, Good Friday, 25th of March 2005. This is on uh, the area of Risdon Cove where Lieutenant Bowen s established the, uh, the first settlement in Tasmania in September 1803. And over the other side of the creek here is a memorial to Lieutenant Bowen, which has now been surrounded by signs that are the local Aboriginal group have put up. Here's the Lieutenant Bowen Memorial. It was actually erected 100 years following settlement. It was officially opened in, uh, or the, um, yes, the opening of the memorial and the function attended by many hundreds of dignitaries in Tasmania, occurred in February 1904. There was a delay because of some smallpox epidemic. We can also see lower down here the, the rock wall here where the, the small boats used to tie up that had come from the sailing ships anchored out in the Derwent. There are some steps there as one can see. and. Um, it's one of these, one of the few remains of uh, early English settlement. Again, you can see the step, steps there, hidden by grass. It's uh, certainly not looked after. This is one of the uh, signs put up by the local Aboriginal community. Uh, which also states this display of racist violence. It's history as we have observed in terms of the records that have been looked at carefully do not support that comment at all. This is the memorial that we've just seen from the other side there. This was actually severely vandalised the time of handover in 1995. It was daubed with red paint. Some of it, uh, there's been a lot of clean up, but if you look at the top where it says this memorial, you can still see signs of the, the red paint around some of the gilt signs. Also more recently, uh, earlier this year, this monument was covered with a white tarpaulin and uh, with red paint to display blood. There is the uh, tarpaulin which is sitting on the back here since it was taken off. Just lying here. Also uh, further desecration to this uh, memorial. One can see the two uh, handprints that have been uh, marked with paint placed on the side of the, mo the memorial stone. This is uh, Reg Watson. Uh, Reg is a Tasmanian historian who has published quite a few books, not the least of which has been a more recent one on Lieutenant Bowen and the settlement and his background. And we'll just pass over now to, to Reg. Just before uh, Reg uh, gives an explanation of the importance of this memorial and what went on, there was a visitor from Queensland on my left who has just made the comment that uh, he's quite amazed that he didn't see any signage to the to the area here and also when he went up to the storekeeper's hut. Thanks Reg. In 1995 in December the land area here was passed over the TAC, Tasmanian Aboriginal Council, led by the notorious activist and radical Michael Mansell. On the day that it was hand over there was hundreds of people here including every parliamentarian in the Hobart's Parliament, the Upper House and the Lower House, represented by the Premier of the day, Mr Ray Groom. Again on the day that it was handed over, this memorial, erected in 1904 to the memory of John Bowen, was vandalised. It was vandalised and it was painted over, and if you go closely to the inscription, it was chipped at. Now what is really angry, every parliamentarian on that day which was here, must have seen that vandalism. Yet not one parliamentarian said anything about it. It was all mum and no parliamentarian laid a complaint. And who laid the complaint? I had a report from someone 
saying that Morrill was uh, vandalised, I came over here and immediately phoned the police. But I am angry and criticise greatly every parliamentarian without exception on that day who saw this most sacred site vandalised and did absolutely nothing. And to make matters worse, it was this year, 2005, when a, a second uh, act of vandalism took place on the memorial. When I came over here, I found this dirty paint draped material tied over the memorial. I phoned the police and the police did absolutely nothing by saying it was out of their hands. I came over here and removed this from the memorial itself. Now, that was tied down and there's more material there by material that was pinned into the ground so that it wouldn't blow away from the wind. To my mind, that's defacing a sacred memorial. And the people who have done this was the TAC. Why? Because when I inquired from the police and the police reported back to me, they said that, that they had admitted in dabbing this most sacred site with this offensive material. In my mind, it's racist. This photograph here on the extreme left is of the day when the handover to the TAC took place. This is Ray Groom, the then Premier, Liberal Premier may I say, of the day. And uh, he's, in my opinion, the one that's caused most of the problem. The one on the right is Ida West. Now, I knew Ida and spoke to her, and she was a, a gentlewoman. And may I say that she expressed concern about the radicals that were taking over the Aboriginal movement. To the extreme right over here, with the uh, Aboriginal flag. Uh, I don't know of these characters, but here of course is our friend uh, Mike Mansell, who really needs no introduction, particularly to uh, uh, General Gaddafi of Libya. Um, over on this far one there again, I I'm not too sure. There are no there's a series of photographs, uh, quite, uh, I think, uh, provocative, and so close to the memorial here of the uh, TAC activities. One, I'm amused that there is a Santa Claus which I don't think fitted into the uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, stories of um, the ancient people here, but nonetheless. And I can't help thinking, you know, and I'm not being rude or, or, or offensive, but say this presentable young chap here, now he looks like some of my grandsons, and he is as white as some of my grandsons. Now if he, he has an Aboriginal blood in him, that's nothing wrong with that. There's cause to celebrate. But a person of that calibre and of these calibre, they should be celebrating two cultures, the Aboriginal culture and clearly the Anglo-Celtic British culture. And what's wrong with that? This is a, a site of profound historical importance. It was Thomas Wilson's, the storekeeper's house or hut. Look at it now, it's a disgrace. The signs are broken, the, the, the uh, wording is um, vandalised, and the actual site itself is neglected. Where else in the Western world would you see such an historical site as this so neglected? And those people that neglect it stand to be condemned. It's not only this site. We can move up on the hill to the various other sites that were, uh, uh, were there, and we'll find a similar situation as Thomas Wilson's house here and it speaks for itself and it's an utter shame. Now here we have what is obviously the fireplace of Thomas Wilson's hut. You can see the neglect of it and the appalling condition that it's allowed to come. Any healthy country would treasure such an archaeological value site as this which was built so long ago, in 1803-1804, now in excess of 200 years. Behind me is one of the huts of several which were erected in the early 1980s after the archaeological report which appeared in the late 1970s, uh, established by the then National Parks and Wildlife. Now you can see now in this year 2005, 
it's almost falling down. Indeed, it's the only one that is remaining. Now, the time and elements don't make it collapse and help by vandalism. We can see by the surrounding vegetation here, it's only going to take one spark and fire is going to wipe that out within five minutes. We're inside the hut now and it's in a deplorable condition. Over to my left, you can see the problems that is existing with the hut itself. Not only there, uh, over here as well. In fact, it's gone right through the wall and you can see around the fireplace here, you can see how it's crumbling. Give it a year at the most and there won't be anything here. Give it a year at the most and there won't be anything here. When I was a boy, the remains of rest down was here. Now there's only brick and rubble. It's an historical house, one of the oldest in the area, built in 1833. But again, nothing is left. And again, it's a tragedy that it wasn't preserved as part of a working historical establishment, which would be of a value not only to Hobart, not only to Tasmania, but for the rest of Australia.